we are about to start the last session for this event. And after which, we're going to have refreshments. <laughs> the last session is German-Israeli cooperation. This is a panel, and I'm going to call three additional people to the stage. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Grisha, Shai, and Yoni. Please come to the stage, guys. Guys, this is the last session, so let's try to make it fun. Let's try to, to up it up a little bit. So, so when we talk, can we talk? Um, so, Grisha, you didn't present yourself. So, just I'll give you 20 seconds to say who you are and what do you do here. And, and everyone else already presented themselves. My name is Grisha. I'm <coughs> losing my voice. No, I, I'm uh, the CEO of the Israeli German Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, running that organization here for a bit over 10 years uh, and um, try to be kind to, to be kind of an ambassador of Israeli of, uh, of German economy and German industry in Israel no, okay. sorry um, <laughs> perfect <laughs> 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 uh, wonderful so Talking about collaboration, everybody said good things. Everybody really want to work together. On a practical note, when we will finish this session, it's going to be very, very, very hard. I want to know why it's going to be very hard and how, and what are the tips and tricks that you can share with people to actually overcome those real practical challenges in working together when you live in two different countries with two different cultures. Anyone can start. I will. Um, we mentioned that uh, a couple of times already during the visit of, of Business Metropole Region Ruhr, uh, who are doing an extremely special and good job in trying to overcome those, those uh, difficulties. Uh, the difficulties are not only um, intercultural. They are, we can talk about that and we can laugh about it as well. But that's not the only point. The, the, the biggest uh, uh, challenge I see is that small companies have their difficulties in working together with big companies and vice versa. Uh, the greatest challenge I see is the challenge of scale up. It is the problem of, uh, for, for a German company, even a medium sized company that can also have turnovers of a couple of billion euros. Uh, and a small Israeli company that is not going, is always running. It's running against time, it's running it's against markets, and it's run, running against financing. And the time span that a company of that kind has, it's much shorter than time spans that uh, big companies have. And we will have to work very hard to support the Israeli companies to find more stamina and very hard to work with the German companies to start moving a little earlier than only after having 100% of the information. Perfect. Maybe just to add, from my perspective, what I learned is that uh, for German companies, for everything there is a reason. And sometimes you're not, you're not able to see that reason for, for whatever, because you, you lack the information or because you want to run a bit faster whatever the reason is, but for everything there is a reason. As, as, as mentioned by Grisha, the, the, the Israeli temper is much faster and it, does, it doesn't work, so you need to take some breath and, and really understand that there is a reason, even if you don't see it, and this is the way to work. So I would like to add on the point of working small companies together with large corporates, and I can yeah, tell you from the, this large corporate perspective, and uh, to, to, to give you a story, I, I, I'm working on the interface between the startups here and, uh, and the large corporate uh, with 40,000 employees in Germany. And uh, there was a wish of a startup to, to get connected with uh, an expert about, I think it was IoT security. I got in contact with our colleagues and said, hey, this, this guy wants to talk. Uh, is there someone uh, who uh, is able to talk to them very short term? Okay, it lasts three days. Then uh, I get an email from, from the boss of the one I talked to. This one said, okay, please talk to me first. Uh, long story short, after, after one week, I had 
five people to talk with. I had a lot of paper on my desk which says, okay, the startup has to fill in this information security uh, paper, this, this paper and this paper, and then we are ready to talk. I said, full stop, that's not the way how it's working. We are talking about just a call, an expert call, with someone who can ask questions in a way uh, in a positive way, not in a way you can't do it, in a way of if you can do it, then I have the following advice to you. So it's about translating a little bit the culture, guiding startups to the jungle of corporates, and also educating the corporate guides on the other hand, what is the need of the startup. If you can manage this, then I think it could be a fruitful cooperation. Okay. Do you want to answer this question as well? Yeah. You want He'll skip this one. Perfect. Um, okay. So, uh, um, um, Christoph, is it your first time in Israel? No. How many times have you been here? Uh, seven, 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 eight times, times or something. And when was the first time you came here? First time was uh, one year ago. One year ago. Okay. Yeah. So you've been here seven times in the past uh, year. That's amazing. Um, do you mind me asking what amazed you the most the first time you came to Israel? What amazed you? Yeah, oh. what, what was a shocking experience? Why? What? What? Okay, the, the easy answer is uh, I came first time in winter, and here it was close to summer. So, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I think that, that that's not the answer you want to hear. Uh, it's uh, the people are here straightforward, and I have a great guy here in our team who is supporting me from the Israeli, and he said, okay, you have to 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 adapt to the Israeli way of uh, working. And uh, he advised me uh, for, for, for this conference, but he gave me a lot of other advices, but this is the most prominent one. He advised me for this conference, he said, okay, if you arrive tomorrow morning, then there will be a long row. The Israeli way is, if there's a colleague in the front of the row, you just go to the front of the row, and then you're in. And I did it, so and it worked very well. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, did they, to, did huh? they accept you back to Germany after you did that? <laughs> uh, so I will try it next time in Germany. So it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, just uh, taking this, this brave way <laughs> and um, <laughs> let's check out. I, I have to translate the Israeli way in, in, in German. So let's see. That's a challenge. But uh, that's a takeaway. You're very straightforward here and I love it. It's, it's great. Amazing. So um, um, Grisha, you've been to, you visited Germany many times, right? I grew up in Germany. You grew up. Uh, to, what, to what age did you come to Israel? 22. 22. Um, two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> you told me you're 25, suddenly you're 24. <laughs> I know, it doesn't look like that. So, so, so you, uh, I was born in 1969, don't worry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so, so, well, so, so you're in a very good position to compare the two cultures, like the German culture and the Israeli culture. Um, how, wh wh what, what would you say, how do you gap um, this, this changes? This, how do you hope, now you're in a position to tell Israeli entrepreneurs and German business people uh, what they should change, or what kind of hacks they should do in their character to help them work together. Uh, first of all, I don't think it's about change. I think it is about understanding and knowing. That's the first important thing, because we don't want the Germans to be like the Israelis, it would be terrible. And we probably also don't want the Israelis to be like the Germans, because it wouldn't fit. So what we want is them to understand us and us to understand them. Uh, and the differences stem from our history, they stem from, our, from the culture, they stem from religion, they stem from our experience, they stem from our size or smallness and their size and bigness. Uh, they stem from uh, uh, our experiences in this region uh, and many other aspects. And you have to, first, of, first and foremost, you have to know that other side. And wh what I'm doing quite often, I'm giving intercultural training seminars to, to German companies who prepare for long-term business relationship with Israelis and also the other way around. Um, and it's very interesting to see what, for example, international uh, uh, companies when they do this in-house for themselves, what they tell their colleagues in the States, how the Israelis are. It's very interesting to see through the eyes of someone else. And for example, Intel has a slide for their people that when you go to Israel and you give a presentation, be ready to be interrupted. <laughs> First point. Let it happen. Why do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I waited for you to pick that up. <laughs> And 
and then they, and then they say Israelis uh, like to dispute and when I heard that I said not true <laughs> so that's exactly the same point know that other side and where it comes from we are a much smaller and much more dense society we are uh, knowing each other we are on a first name basis and and we know each other and there's a very strong common ground although and all by all, all, all uh, differences in, in Germany it's not that case in Germany there's a sentence very interesting sentence that says Dienst ist Dienst und Schnaps ist Schnaps now you say that Dienst ist Dienst und Schnaps ist Schnaps see <laughs> see it's easy it which is. means work is work and pleasure is pleasure and you divide those two and that is to say that Germans are real good workers but they stop working at five o'clock and that's it okay and then they go home and then they have their pleasure time and they don't mix those they don't mix both worlds they have these are parallel worlds in Israel we don't have that division we bring our home to work and we bring our work home this is what we always do so we work at 10 o'clock in the evening with emails and we have our children now at our workplace and also our dogs and we and we know everything about yeah. everybody and then when we talk to Germans we want to know are you married perfect yeah so <laughs> th these are differences we have to know we have to know where they come from that's all wonderful Yoni <laughs> I have, a, I have actually a very good example to that. I think that Grisha echoed okay, a very good point. Um, my secretary came to me a few days ago. We have a very good uh, colleague at Continental, which had a birthday. She wanted to send him flowers. She said, okay, I'm going to send it to his home. I said, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> you send it to the office, not home. Although, and for her, it was very strange. Why? Here in Israel, that's, that's common. No, no, no. You don't mix and match. That's exactly the point. It's interesting. So, uh, yeah. So in the end, just to echo what you said, I think it's understand who are you working with and adapt. We Israelis uh, need to better understand and adapt. Let's say, I won't, uh, let's say, discuss Germans. Let's say Japanese customers, they will ask you 100 times why. And yes, if you have a project with them, you will have to give this kind of a book with all of the answers as to the 100 times of why. And the same goes for Germans. They have their own, let's say, uh, nooks and crannies, and they have their own needs. You have to adapt and understand. That's very, very simple. Amazing. So, Shai, um, you're from the automotive industry. It's safe to assume that you've visited Germany more than once. Yeah? Yeah? Um, I guess you go there from time to time. Tell me, so you have a lot of experience in working with German people. What, what works well, maybe if you have a story to tell, something that you know what was exactly on the spot? I think what works well is good preparation. So no surprises, no rabbit in the head that you put in the middle of a meeting. You need to be very, very well structured. Uh, know who, who are you talking to. The discussions are very much in a hierarchy level, so it's not like we do when we speak straight to the face and is nothing looks odd when you uh, challenge your boss in a public meeting or not in a, in a crowded meeting. And in the German culture this is different, so from my point of view is preparation, collaboration. Uh, if, if you are working very closely, so if you are in a, an advanced stage of a project, maybe think about relocating employees, so some of, some of your employees send them to Germany for a few months, bring others who are willing to take the challenge and the adventure and come to Tel Aviv for a few months. This is really builds the relationship and builds the, the good uh, working together. Do you have any specific project in Germany right now? Sure. So Simotiv is a joint venture between uh, three top Israeli executives from the Secret Service and Volkswagen Group. So Volkswagen Group holds 40% of the company. Uh, our office in Germany is basically like five minutes drive from the uh, Wolfsburg plant of Volkswagen. And we have some employees, some Israelis who are already there. We have some Germans who are already here. So all is uh, uh, taught from the experience. So in that sense, Simon Motive is in, in a success story with the Israeli-German collaboration. I think so. Okay. Uh, Yoni, you have some business in Germany as well? Correct. Um, tell us about one project that you have. Well, obviously I cannot discuss the details. Uh, 
as uh, I would say the NDA clauses uh, in this industry are very restricted. So Shai will also not say what he's doing, but let's put it this way. Uh, Argus has five offices worldwide, Tokyo, Stuttgart, uh, Silicon Valley, and Detroit. Let's say that we have active projects in all of these places. I'll stop with that. Perfect. And HQ is in Tel Aviv, if I've not mentioned. Christoph. So I'm looking at it from, from this perspective, working together with startups here, and maybe one, one interesting thing for, for, for energy is we are working here together with a, with a phishing startup. So they are they're tackling phishing attacks. Oh. And, uh, and the first thought, you, you don't think there is no relationship to, to energy, uh, first level relationship. Yeah. On the other hand, we are working together with uh, blockchain startups. And blockchain startups, are, and there's a lot of things about ICOs. Uh, when we heard the pitch from the phishing uh, startup, they said, okay, are you aware that uh, a two-digit percentage of uh, the funding which goes in ICO is actually by phishing emails when they're going to the wrong ways? So we connected them to, to our startups uh, we are working with on this side, and now we have relationships between blockchain startups and cybersecurity startups. So that's, I think, the best example for energy. Amazing. So just one, one, one suggestion. Um, when talking about phishing startups, you want to say anti-phishing startups because you never know. Yeah, yeah, for, you never know. For sure. So, so, you, know, uh, you never know. Um, unless, that, yeah. unless you meant like, and then I don't want to hear about that. Yeah, good, um, good, good, good that you mentioned it. You, meant it, you, you said first maybe uh, you're not an expert of energy and, and cybersecurity. Obviously, you, you find the gap. No, cybersecurity, I understand a thing or two. It's this perfect. is what I do for a living. What? Fantastic. I, yeah, I don't understand anything about energy. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so. Yeah. On and off, yeah. And so, anti phishing startup. Anti -fishing Just to make it yeah. clear. So, the other one we are exploring, maybe there are also chances. Guys, so, w w so when we will conclude this panel, we will conclude the entire event and then we're going to have refreshments outside. And what separates the people from the refreshments is you guys now. I'm going to give you 20 seconds, but really 20 seconds, to convey your own message to close up this, this event, Israel, Germany, technology, uh, collaboration and cooperation. What should we do next to make it happen? No, I started, so I will finish. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant way to I'll position echo, yourself. So I'll echo what I said uh, earlier. Uh, I think that we're just starting. I think that there is a w still a very long way to go. Uh, there are mutual interests here uh, for both parties. And as long as we continue being clear with each other, uh, I think that the best is yet to come, from my perspective. The best is yet to come, definitely. So from my perspective, uh, speaking of the automotive industry, Israel has a lot to offer. Germany has... Uh, quite strong industry in that sense and what I see is really more and more representatives, more and more delegations. This is, the future is bright at least for the automotive. Perfect. So maybe maybe just a, a recommendation to, to the German delegation which is here. Be prepared that you will have the emails from the Israeli startup in your post box already at the Israel airport. That's true. Um, this session started with a presentation of the business metropole Ruhr, uh, but no name of any of those 53 uh, cities was mentioned. Uh, they are great cities there, and if you talk about Germany, Germany is not Berlin. Maybe France is Paris, and London is England, and maybe, maybe even Rome is, uh, or, or Milan is, is Italy, but Germany is very federal and you have to know those regions. And we're talking about a region of a huge population. We talk about real great cities. My mother was born there in Dortmund, for example. And you have uh, Bochum, and you have uh, Bielefeld, and you have uh, Recklinghausen. You have, you have great cities. And each of those cities is much bigger than most of the cities in this country. And if you look closer at, at Germany as such for the Israeli companies, um, there's huge potential. And we are now in the cha in, at the chamber, we're in a situation where more and more German companies, also Mittelstand companies, family-owned business, third, fourth, fifth, sixth generation, are coming over because they want to 
tap into the Israeli ecosystem of innovation, of disruptiveness, and w this is really great. So we are very happy that we can cooperate with Business Metropole Ruhr for actively and proactively scouting for companies out of that region uh, for Israeli technologies. So companies, Israeli companies, if you look into Germany, come to the chamber, and a German delegation, you see what's going on here, go to Business Metropole of Ruhr and connect with us because you have to be always one step ahead and I think with us you can do that. So, great. Amazing. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much. <laughs> I would like to thank all the German people that came here, all the German delegation, uh, for your time and effort and thank you for participating in the Cyber Week. I would like to, uh, to say thank you to all the Israelis and all the other members and participants from abroad. Thank you for, for participating in this event and I hope you will have a wonderful Cyber Week ahead. Thank you so much.